In this short video, we're going to talk about limits and continuity in the context of functions of several variables. So let's look at two functions. Each one is a function of two variables. The first one is sine of the quantity x squared plus y squared over the quantity x squared plus y squared. And the second function, which is g, is x squared minus y squared over the quantity x squared plus y squared. And we're going to look at the limits. Even though we haven't really defined what this means formally for a function of two variables, we should have a pretty good notion uh, from calculus one, uh, the idea of the limit process. So we'd like to find a limit as the ordered pair x comma y approaches the ordered pair 0 comma 0 of our first function, sine of quantity x squared plus y squared over the quantity x squared plus y squared. And then we'd like to find the limit as x y approaches 0 0 of the quantity x squared minus y squared over the quantity x squared plus y squared. Now, I'm going to, going to remind you from Calc 1 that we use the squeeze theorem to show that the limit as theta goes to 0 of sine of theta over theta equals 1. So it shouldn't be that much of a surprise if I tell you that the limit as xy approaches 0 comma 0 of sine of x squared plus y squared over x squared plus y squared, that equals 1. Now we're going to analyze this, just accept these as facts for the moment. Meanwhile, our other limit does not exist. So I need to have some kind of mechanism of determining when does the limit exist? When does the limit not exist? So informally, we'll say the limit as xy approaches a comma b of the function f of xy equals the number l, provided that we can ensure that the values of f are arbitrarily close to l whenever the point x comma y is sufficiently close to the point a comma b. So as long as we're close enough, if I, we choose x and y close enough to a and b, we can make the function values arbitrarily close to the number l. And more well, formally, what does uh, arbitrarily close mean? Well, in our formal definition, we would say that the limit as xy approaches a comma b of f of xy equals l, provided that if you give me any positive number epsilon, so we assume that epsilon is some tiny number, I can find a, a positive number delta such that whenever the distance between the point x comma y and the point a comma b is smaller than delta. So this is what we mean by saying that the point x comma y is sufficiently close to the point a comma b. Then the function value minus the limit value is within epsilon. So it's hard to use this formal definition uh, in many cases. It really takes some practice, and it's a little bit beyond a Calculus 3 class. But we can still look at our examples, for, and what we're going to use here is a change of variables. We're going to note that hmm, polar coordinates, uh, we could make r equal radical x squared plus y squared. So x squared plus y squared would be r squared. And then we'll have to note the fact that um, x comma y 
approaches zero comma zero is equivalent to saying that r is getting close to zero r approaches zero and so then we could rewrite this as the limit as r approaches zero of sine of r squared over r squared and from calculus one we learn that that limit is going to be one So finding what the limit value is uh, or determining that the limit exists it can be challenging. But there is a test to determine when the limit does not exist, which might be simpler to use. So this is we're going to state as a fact or a theorem that the if you approach, so if you take values of x comma y, which are approaching a comma b along a certain path c1 and you get a limit value l1 and then you take a different path you approach you take values of x and y as they get closer to a and b but along a different path and you get a different limit value then you can say that the limit does not exist so you can't really use this to show that a limit exists because it's impossible to check every single possible path, but it is a good test to determine that the limit does not exist. What do I mean by path? Well, let's go back to our original limit, which does not exist. The limit as x comma y approaches zero comma zero of x squared minus y squared over x squared plus y squared. If we approach 0 comma 0 along the line x equals 0. So that's really just on the y-axis. So we're only going to look at uh, points on the y-axis. So x is equal to 0. Well, if x is equal to 0, I'm really down to a function of only uh, one variable y, so I only need to look at uh, the limit as y approaches zero, and I'll have y negative y squared over y squared. That'll give me negative one whenever y is not equal to zero. Let's approach along a different path. What if we look along the line y equals zero? In other words, we're going to look on the x-axis. So if y equals 0, we're only going to take the points on the x-axis that are getting close to the origin. And if we put y equals 0 there, I'll just get x squared over x squared. And as x approaches 0, that limit value is 1. So I get negative 1 as I approach along the y-axis. And I get positive 1 as I approach along the x-axis. And so I, since I get two limit values on using two different paths, then the limit does not exist. Let's do a couple more examples where we can show that the limit does not exist. Here we have the same uh, target value. We're taking values of x comma y approaching zero comma zero of xy over quantity x squared plus y squared. Well, in this example, if I approach along the y-axis, the limit is 0. And if I approach along the x-axis, the limit is also 0. And so, but remember, that doesn't say that the limit must exist, because we can't use every single curve. But since we're being told that the limit does not exist, that means we have to think about a different path or curve that approaches 0 comma 0. Well, we tried a horizontal line. We tried a vertical line. Both of those gave us a, uh, the same answer, the same limit value of 0. Let's try a sloping line, y equals mx. So I'm going to replace in my original function y with mx. That's how I get mx squared over x squared plus m squared x squared. And now 
I'm going to have to note that, of course, as x approaches 0, y will also approach 0. So I just have to find the limit as x approaches 0. Well, I can go ahead and factor out the x squared here. And from the uh, denominator, that will divide out with the x squared in the numerator. And I'll just be left with the constant m over 1 plus m squared which is not zero, because we said that m can't be zero. So I'm getting two different limit values. If I take any sloping line, which has a non-zero slope, then I'll get this value. But if I take a vertical line or a horizontal line, I get zero. So again, that shows that the limit does not exist. All right, our last example then would be that uh, we have xy squared over x squared plus y to the power of 4. And we want to show the limit as xy approaches 0, comma 0 does not exist. And so if I try along a horizontal line, or along a vertical line, or indeed along a slanting line, now let me see here. Again, I'm going to replace y with mx. So now I'll have m squared x squared times x, so m squared x cubed. Uh, then I have x squared plus uh, m to the fourth x to the fourth. I have a common factor of x squared. Let me factor that out and divide it through the numerator and the denominator. Now as x approaches 0, the bottom approaches 1, but the top approaches 0. So that limit is also 0. So I'm going to have to use something that's not a line, because if I approach 0, the origin, along any line, the limit value is always 0. But if I try, say, the parabola, x equals y squared, what happens there? Well, so x is going to be y squared, and uh, y is just going to stay y. So as y approaches 0, y squared will also approach 0. So let me just write that as the limit as y approaches 0. I'll go ahead and replace x with y squared. So I have y squared times y squared in the top. That's y to the power of 4. Then I'll have y squared squared. That's y to the power of 4 plus another y to the power of 4. So that will give me in the limit one half. And so along the parabola, the limit is one half. Along any line, the limit is zero. So the limit does not exist. And in our last definition here, what does it mean for a function of several variables to be continuous? Well, it's really very much like the same definition as we had with functions of one variable. And we say that the function f of x, y is continuous at the point a comma b, provided that the limit as x, y approaches a, b of f of x, y is f of a, b. So just like with functions of uh, one variable, this implies three conditions must be true. First of all, the limit as x, y approaches a, b has to exist. So the limit value exists. The function has to be defined at a, b. So the function value has to exist. And finally, the limit value must be the same as the function value. All right, so now that we have limits and continuity, let's move on to our next topic in the next few videos, which will be how can we find the rate of change of functions of several variables?